All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Allison Matthews, Executive Director of the Gilead Compass Faith Coordinating Center at Wake Forest University. Um, today, we will be talking about our upcoming grant opportunities for the 2024 um, year. And so just to give you some background, um, the Faith Coordinating Center is housed in the School of Divinity at Wake Forest University in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And um, we're working to transform the story of HIV AIDS in faith communities to, in order to respond to the HIV crisis in the South and promote positive health outcomes. Of course, I am the executive director. I am also a research fellow in faith and health. Um, and the, the purpose of the Faith Coordinating Center is to provide opportunities for storytelling to, to partner with experts in talking about HIV, faith, stigma, healing, mental health, and um, you know, and also engaging people through the, the arts like music, um, sculpture, plays, documentaries, et cetera. In addition to that, we develop social media and communication toolkits for faith communities to use. The most recent one that we have created is a faith leader toolkit for National Faith HIV AIDS Awareness Day. And we're actually in the process of finalizing a toolkit uh, for Black families and LGBTQ populations and how to talk to them about um, their identities and integration with faith messages as well as um, HIV. We also conduct trainings. So we conduct monthly um, and sometimes bi-monthly trainings on different topics like trauma. Um, we talk about how to use social media to communicate your messages. We, we do trainings on, of course, HIV 101, as well as um, how to, you know, how to do grant writing, how to um, do fundraising and how to pitch your organization to you know to get funds, et cetera, and so and how to scale and and become more efficient in your organization. So we continue to provide those trainings. Most of them are for our funded partners, but we also provide opportunities for larger discussion that is related to um, the you know to op we we host open trainings for people um, to have access to our content as well. In addition to that, um, a, as a part of our training, we actually have an HIV and Faith Ambassador Program in addition to the funded organizations that we work with. And those ambassadors um, go through a, the same series of trainings and we help them to make their health ministries um, more robust and sustainable. And like I mentioned, we, have, uh, we also have funding opportunities that focus on building the capacity of nonprofit organizations to um, engage in this work um, and, and to engage with faith leaders and faith-based organizations or to, to launch their own faith-based initiatives, as well as we work with faith communities who are interested in applying for funding, who, um, who are looking to add in some HIV programming um, or become more ro robust in their work to do HIV work. And we, I think another priority for us for the funding is to um, address the social determinants of health um, regarding access to, you know, transportation, housing, uh, mental health, uh, education, et cetera. We know that, you know, a lot of times the HIV stigma is, uh, can, you know, make it difficult to engage with certain populations that are more conservative. And so I think, you know, thinking about ways to address HIV as a social justice issue and as an issue of larger um, determinants of health and integrating messages of HIV into that. Um, another one, you know, or for example, criminal justice, those are ways that we, um, you know, we encourage and we actually uh, prioritize funding for organizations who try to integrate those, those different overlapping interests. We have partnerships with Atrium Health, Wake Forest Baptist, which is the hospital system that we are part of, which actually has expanded beyond North Carolina all the way down to Georgia and up to, I want to say, Ohio. Um, we also have partnership with the U.S. HIV AIDS Faith Coalition, 
the Bauman Gilead, the UNC Center for AIDS Research, as well as Old North State Medical Society. I wanted to give you all um, an idea of the timeline of the different grant opportunities that are coming out this coming year, um, because quite a few of us have asked, um, quite a few of uh, quite a few of the organizations have asked about the different funding opportunities. Some of them um, are currently funded with us, and I know people have been asking the, of the current funded partners. You know, should they be applying for this upcoming grant cycle that is January to December, or should they be applying, you know, is this appropriate or not? And so this, I think, is trying to get at that for you all. So this January to December new funding opportunity, the Faith Action and the Learning It Together opportunities, um, you know, anyone is eligible to apply if you're a nonprofit organization or if you're a faith-based organization, um, you are eligible to apply. If you are not, if you don't have a 501c3, you can get a fiscal sponsor to um, support your application. Um, for people who are currently funded partners with us, I would say that you might want to consider um, waiting for the transformative grant, which is a $100,000 opportunity that's July through June. We really are trying to prioritize this January through December to create new opportunities for organizations who have not been previously funded. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that you wouldn't be competitive if you already funded with us, but we are trying to create opportunities for additional organizations who haven't been funded to have opportunity to, to become funded partners with us. Um, if you are a current funded partner um, and you want to apply for this cycle, I would suggest that you really make it clear that you can handle two grants at one time and that you have um, the the uh, the staff to handle those grants as well as the projects need to be distinct. Um, the, the work that you're doing uh, currently with us should be different than what you're proposing for this new cycle. So I'm gonna dive deeper into the specifics of the um, different funding opportunities that we have for this current cycle, which is that January to December cycle. So also something that's different about the Learning It Together cohort for this year is that we are actually doing a six month project rather than it being 12 month projects. Um, because it's six months, we are offering $10,000 opportunities for artists um, or organizations who are working and doing some type of cre creative work to um, apply for these for this funding. So this is a cohort-based model. The idea is that the grantees would participate in um, closed workshops where we're focused on building out your career as an artist um, and or initiating uh, um, artist-based projects in your community. Um, I know, for example, we have funded um, someone who did a who did sculpture and did workshops around the sculpture that he created. We funded another person who um, is working on a documentary, and they actually started in the Learning It Together cohort and then uh, graduated, if you will, to uh, the Faith Action Grant. And so now they are they have a larger uh, fifty thousand dollar grant with us. And so, you know, we kind of, we also envision that for this cohort, um, you know, creating this kind of um, more nurturing environment for artists and then hopefully seeing them grow into these larger funding opportunities. Um, another example is someone who created and produced plays. And, um, and then we've seen applications for people who are working with students or, or artists in their community. Um, you know, who are creating pieces of work. So I think those are all good examples of people who would be a good fit for this program. Um, in addition, um, we're, you know, the kind of the idea behind the cohort is that they would produce works of art that are connected to the themes about HIV and faith. And then they would present their work and provide a portfolio of their completed work upon the um, completion of the of the program. Um, I wanna also mention that with all of these funding opportunities, 
we are hosting a regional event in, um, I want to say the fall of 2024, where we will be asking and expecting all of our funded partners to join us um, at that regional event. And so that would be also a, an opportunity for the artists to showcase their work and to present on their work, as well as the funded partners. Sorry, I forgot to replace this. It's, it's $10,000, not $25,000, but um, the creation of the new works of art, I think this is just giving you some additional examples, graphic design, painting, music production, spoken word, screen or playwriting, documentaries, um, sculpture, et cetera, with a focus on creating works that address HIV related stigma, reflect the lived experiences of people affected by HIV AIDS, address faith-based trauma and, and its intersection with HIV, reflect themes of healing, spirituality, or interfaith perspectives. So those are some ideas to kind of spark your, your um, kind of creativity and thinking about what kind of project you would want to apply for. Um, you could also think about formalizing an existing program that was that has been well received in your faith community, like a youth writing or performing program, production of a play or other performance, adapting existing evidence-based interventions to include content that addresses faith in HIV. Um, like for example, I have conducted different photo voice um, projects where we work with community members and we give them cameras and we have conversation and, and focus on different themes related to HIV or your faith or your community, have them go out into their communities, take photos that reflect those themes and then come back and talk about those photos. So that's an example of kind of an evidence-based intervention that could be used to, and it's creative, and I think would be a good fit for this Learning It Together cohort. Um, you could also be thinking about training for faith leaders and lay audiences and faith communities to build their capacity to develop content or and or facilitate arts-based interventions um, and establish partnerships with interfaith, medical, or academic sectors with the arts. So I'm going to stop here and see if people have questions about the learning it together. Allison, we have a question in the chat from Ms. Stacy J. Um, and it just says, can you apply for more than one? And I'm, you, I'm guessing it means more than one grant. Uh, we suggest that you make a decision about which grant is the best fit for you and apply for that one grant. We do not suggest that you apply for multiple grants at one time, unless those projects are very distinct. But honestly, we're probably only gonna choose you to get funded for one of them. And second question, um, specifically for the artist cohort, should travel for attendance at the meeting be included in the project budget? Yes. So we have those guidelines in um, the RFP, the request for proposals. And um, so we have the, we have all of those guidelines and I'll go more into more depth about the guidelines after I complete the presentation on faith action. Okay, any other questions before I move on? All right, I don't see any in the chat. So the faith action grants are ranging between $25,000 to $50,000. These are also due on November 6th. Both, both the Learning It Together and the faith action grants are due November 6th. Um, they provide resources. These grants provide resources for nonprofit organizations and faith-based organizations for action-oriented projects centered around faith to help reduce stigma, engage in spiritually integrated trauma-informed care and aid in changing the perception of HIV AIDS in the South. Uh, we're seeking to fund organizations committed to creation of inclusive faith spaces for LGBTQ people and people living with HIV and, uh, and or affected by HIV. Um, if you're applying for the $50,000 opportunity, you will need to make the case that your organization has the infrastructure. So for example, has employees and accountants, et cetera, and or the reach, uh, if it's a regional or if it's a big city that I think counts, 
but um, a regional or statewide kind of um, reach, um, or you've done this work in the past and you're growing your project, you know, just kind of making the case for why you would need $50,000 um, for this project. So also, if you are, say, a larger arts-based project, um, you know, for example, like I mentioned, we have, we've moved some of our artist cohort into these faith action grants, they apply for the larger pots of money and got it. So it doesn't mean that if you are an arts based project that you should, that you don't qualify for the faith action that um, we, we encourage, you know, and we have funded documentaries and other creative projects through the faith action mechanism. Um, the, the learning, I think the difference is the learning it together cohort is really more concentrated on building up the artists in their portfolio and their career, and then helping them to produce their body of work um, and present that body of work. If you're working on a larger project um, that has some art space components to it, I think the faith action project would be more appropriate. So this faith action grant is 12 months. Um, we, again, will be doing bi-monthly and or monthly meetings, um, workshops, and trainings with the, the, uh, the organizations. We, uh, the different types of projects that we have funded in the past, um, we've, we've funded podcasts, we've funded, um, oh goodness, what am I, uh, we funded documentaries, we funded um, people to do, conduct trainings with faith leaders on how to talk about HIV how, and developing curricula um, that could be then distributed across their networks of people. We've we funded people who have hosted series of workshops and, and conferences. Um, so different things that, um, that you think are most appropriate and most effective for your communities, but would enable you to engage them and kind of move the needle forward in addressing stigma around HIV in faith communities. Um, other people have coordinated national communications campaigns to address HIV stigma. People have um, put up billboards in their communities, especially if they're in rural communities um, and, and kind of shored up health ministries. Um, so, you know, there's different types of ways that you could um, propose projects for the Faith Action Grant. So some of the impact of some of the projects that we we have funded, you know, they've trained um, faith communities to address and educate others about HIV stigma um, and trauma-informed strategies. We've increased the capacity of faith communities to address social determinants of health and coordinated with national communications campaigns to address HIV stigma. So you can submit the applications through Gilead, well, you have to submit the applications through gileadcompass.com. Once you go to that website, you will see a beautiful video of all the work that we do, but um, you'll see on the top right-hand side, it'll say, it'll be a button that says apply for funding. Once you click on that button, it will take you to this platform and you have to create a profile and then you'll be able to see all of the different funding opportunities through the Gilead Compass Network and in the initiative. And you'll see the one for Faith Action Grants and you'll see the Learning It Together. You select on those and um, you can choose which one. So I'm actually gonna click on it just to show you really quickly. So you see this button right here, apply for funding. These are all the beautiful videos. <laughs> Um, apply for funding, and then it takes you to the open water platform, and you'll see the eight faith action request for proposals. Um, it, the application does not open until October 2nd, so it opens next week, but you can um, review, I want to say you can click on this, you have to create an account, right, and then um, it, and then once you do that, it will also uh, allow you on the Faith Action Grants to see the full proposal or the request for funding and the guidelines in here. So you can review that ahead of time um, before the application opens. 
And then you'll have a month to submit the application. It'll be no, it's due November 6th at midnight central standard time. Okay. So let me go back to the presentation. So what makes a strong application? <laughs> Clearly articulate how your project will address people living with HIV and or impacted by HIV and be connected to faith communities. Those are the two basic criteria that we're looking for in our applications. Um, if you have letters of support from organizations that you're partnering with or have partnered with, I think those also make your application stronger and you can upload those with your application. Um, they're not required, but it does, I think, make the case stronger for the um, kind of showing that you have already planned something out and established partnerships with organizations. We want you to also clearly articulate how you will deliver your program. Um, in that, in that, there's a question that's like, just kind of like, what's your plan for implementation? Include details like, what's your timeline? What are the deliverables? How do we know what's going to happen? Like what's gonna come out of us funding you? Um, why is it really especially important for your community? Um, you know, provide statistics, provide kind of like what's the previous programming or the lack of programming that's been in your community and why it's needed in your faith communities or, or whatever. Um, make the case for how your organization has done something um, that has, you know, makes you competitive for this grant. So if you haven't done HIV work before, that's okay. Uh, but we want to, you, you should then show us, um, actually, I saw somebody on here that I know that I've worked with before. Um, and so, for example, I, you know, you could put in there, I host, our, I curate arts events in, in the city that I live in. And we, I have extensive connections with local artists and hip hop artists, et cetera. And I have done some HIV programming before. Um, and so now with this, with this grant application, we would like to expand that and build partnerships with the HIV and LGBT um, organizations in our community to make the, um, the, the connection stronger between what's being created in the arts and what's being created with HIV programming in our community, right? So I think that's a good justification that you would want to put in your applications. Um, don't worry about your project being too small. You know, we have, um, we we do want, we're really trying to prioritize grassroots organizations, um, minority-led organizations, especially Black and Latinx-led organizations, um, organizations who are just getting off the ground. We really are prioritizing putting money into those types of communities because we want to see you, um, we want to see you grow. And, and we know that you oftentimes, are the ones who have the, the strongest connection to the community, but don't have the resources, right? And so that's why that's why this funding exists. Okay, so um, like I mentioned, 501c3 organizations. If you don't have a 501c3, that's okay. You can work with a fiscal sponsor um, to submit your application. So the fiscal sponsor, when you're filling out your application, um, you would provide a letter from them indicating that you have a partnership with them and they will provide their 501c3 status. Um, and then uh, the rest of the application, all of the questions should be reg regarding you and your organization. The only thing we need from them is the 501c3 status letter from the fiscal organization. And then the money, the way that this works is that the money will go to the fiscal sponsor and then they will distribute it to you, okay? So make sure you have a good relationship with your fiscal sponsor because sometimes it could take them a long time to get your money to you. So you wanna have those conversations ahead of time before you start working with them uh, to make sure that they're a good fit. The amount of the request should be reflected in the scope of your project. So the application asks for details about your budget so say you're applying for the $25,000 grant or $50,000 or anywhere in between that, um, you want to put in your budget details about 
um, how you're going to spend the money. Are you going, what, what are the personnel that you're covering? Uh, what are the programs you're covering? Are you paying for travel? Are you paying for gift cards to compensate people? Um, do you need to pay for printing and, and uh, uh, ordering promotional products? You know, do you need to pay for food? Um, do you need to pay for rental space, right? So include all of that in your budget and make it make it detailed. Um, a, one question that I get asked often is, can we cover salary? And yes, you can, but you can, I would not suggest, especially because the amounts, the award amounts are not large amounts. Um, I would not cover 100% of anyone's salary in these grants. I would say the maximum you would want to cover is about 40% of anyone's salary. Um, oftentimes, executive directors of the organizations don't pay themselves. I think I'm an advocate for you paying yourself for doing the work, especially if you're going to be the main one doing the work. Cover a portion of your salary to cover you for doing the work. Um, the grant cycle for the Faith Action Grant is January 1 to December 31st. Ideally, uh, we will get your money to you by January 15th. But if you've started any activities um, from January 1, you can include those in, you can cover those with the grant money. Um, <clears throat> for the Learning It Together core, it's January 1 to June 30th, and then July 1 to December 31st. So it's two six-month programs. And the second cohort of the Learning It Together will have a um, application that's due in May of 2024. So if you're looking to apply later in the year, then I would just wait to apply later. Um, but if you're looking to start as a Learning It Together cohort artist uh, for this cohort, go ahead and submit your application for November 6. So... The expectation is also that you are to complete quarterly uh, reports um, as a part of the projects to, to let us know who you're reaching, what progress have you made, what challenges do you have. It just helps us to better um, assess what needs you have and then also to track the progress and the impact of the grants that we've given you. Um, and so we will actually be sending you the um, the the survey ahead of time so you can start preparing your materials to submit those reports. So you'll have a lot of support in um, completing those reports. And then we'll also be pairing you with coaches through the staff to help you. And, you know, if there's any questions or if there's any challenges with your projects, or we also understand that things change as you're working with community. And so we're pretty flexible about those things, um, but being in open communication with us is the best practice. This grant does not fund individuals. Um, so for example, um, <clears throat> the grant, I don't know where that is coming from. This is that spam or something. I don't even know how somebody is doing that. <laughs> okay, so um, we uh, it doesn't fund individuals, general operations, endowments, or fundraising events. So, uh, but you know, so what that basically means is we don't encourage people to just um, fund one person to do the work, right? It's really about creating a program um, and putting the money towards that program. Um, rather than just paying for one person to do the work. So awards can be used to pay for program-related costs um, and appropriate staff costs, supplies, technology. If you need to buy a computer or something like that, you can do that through this project um, or software. Um, you can pay for incentives and membership fees for requi required platforms like Zoom. <laughs> Um, you cannot use funds to pay for or offset the cost of any of the following, such as medications, purchasing of medications, direct medical expenses, um, lab, uh, you know, lab expenses, deficits in the organization, biomedical research or clinical trials, um, the 
projects cannot directly influence or advance Gilead's business. So Gilead um, Sciences is a pharmaceutical company that funds this work. So for example, they produce um, pre-exposure prophylaxis or PrEP. Um, so we, we are not allowed to fund organizations who are just going out and telling people to get on PrEP, right? Or enrolling people onto PrEP. That is not what, how the funds are supposed to be used. We really need to keep a separation between those. Um, what you are allowed to say is that um, there is an HIV prevention medication that exists and you um, can access it. And so there's more than just PrEP that's available. And so that's how we kind of get around that is by talking about HIV prevention medications in general, rather than just pushing one product, Trivada for, for PrEP. Um, you cannot uh, fund just individuals, individual healthcare providers, or physical group practices, events, or programs that have already occurred, or government lobbying activities. The documents that will be needed for the application include a W-9, letters of support, the uh, the proposal, which will, that you can, you basically just answer the questions in the application, and that is your proposal. Um, including the 501c3 verification or your fiscal sponsor letter, the letter of support from your fiscal sponsor, the your your organization operating budget. So some people give me ask questions about this. So if you're a church or a larger organization, and you're applying as someone who works at the organization. Yes, you still need to include the operating budget of that full organization. Um, and then you, of course, include the grant budget and budget narrative for the um, project, the specific project. And then we also have a template that um, asks you to come up with your work plan. So it, it asks you what's the, the goals of your project and how are you going to accomplish that project and what's the timeline for accomplishing that and then who's responsible. So all of that is in the template and you can just fill that out and then upload it. And we have links to all of these documents in the application for you to download, uh, work on. We have a grant budget um, template also that you can download and then just upload. And we also have the W-9 is linked in the application. You download it, you work on it, and then you upload it into the application. So because there's all these different app, uh, documents connected to the application, I would make, you know, I would start early create your profile, start working on the application. You can save your work as you go. And then, um, you know, and, and, and try to, you know, try to get it done and try to submit it at least two to three days before the deadline, just in case there's anything that happens. Don't wait until 11.59 is central time to submit your application. This is the timeline. The... Um, the grant application will open October 2nd, it's due November 6th, review your applications. Uh, we will be reviewing the applications during November and send award letters by mid-December, um, and then you will receive your funding by January 15th. Does anyone have questions? I have a question. Angel. Hi. Um, my name is Angel. I said Dozier, and I am with the Connected Durham in Durham. And so my question is about the um, working, learning together grant, because it says on the part that there's a $25,000 grant and then a $40,000 um, that's, sorry, that's that's old information. That it's actually um, a ten thousand dollar grant for six months. Okay, so that's what I that's what I had a question about because I saw the other hi, um, and thank you y'all for just making sure that I was able to get this information. Um, but yeah, that that's what I saw, and so that was where my question came from. Thank you. Yes. So apologies for that, but if you feel like. There's, your project is bigger than, than $10,000 would warrant, um, I would suggest you apply for the Faith Action Grant. 
Yeah, I think that's what we're leaning towards. We've been um, reviewing quite a few of these things. So I wanted to make sure I heard about this from your perspective so that we can make the best decision for moving forward. But it's really exciting. And um, I'm glad that y'all are offering this to our communities because it's so important and helps to like bridge these divides that keep happening. So thank you. Absolutely. Any other questions? And yes, apologies. I meant to say this earlier that we will, we are recording this uh, and we will be sharing it out for people to review along with the slides. So if you have any additional questions, you can email compass at wfu.edu. Um, Tarsha Bannister has added it, Reverend Doctor. Uh, Tarsha Bannister has added it to the chat. Um, make sure you um, feel free to email us compass at wfu.edu and we'll work to answer your questions. Also, if you have any technical difficulties with the um, application platform, also, please email us so that we can help mitigate those issues for you before you submit. Um, because I know some people, you know, you get to the deadline and then you realize there's some technical issues and you start to freak out because of whatever reason. And so we want to work with you. We want to make sure that this is a seamless process. So please um, communicate with us and also please start working on your applications earlier rather than later to mitigate any of those issues. So since the artist grant runs for six months, the current grantees um, can you apply and still be eligible for the transformative grant. So I think my, my question to you, Renisha, is um, you want to both apply for the artist grant and then also apply for the transformative grant? Is that what you're saying, Renisha? Yes. Um, oh, you'd like to sponsor an artist. Okay. So that's different. I think if you're if you're the fiscal sponsor, then I don't see why there would be any kind of holding you back from doing that. Um, and yes, you would still be eligible for applying for the transform transformative grant that would that application should open in May of 2024. And I think uh Renisha that you would be a good fit for that. So please apply. For the artist grant, if the organization I am part of already receives funding from you, am I still eligible to apply for it? Yes. There's not there's nothing holding anybody back from applying if you already have funding through us. Um, what we're what we're saying is for you to make the case if you are the organization applying for you to make the case on that you have the personnel and that the project is distinctly different from what you already have funding for. If you're someone who works for the organization, but you may not necessarily be connected to or doing work for the project, or you're applying for something different, go ahead and apply. Yes, that's fine. We just make sure that it's distinctly different from what is already being funded because we're not gonna fund the same project twice. Any other questions? All right, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, we look forward to your applications. Have a good afternoon. Y'all do the same. Thank you so much.